If you've used industrial craft machines before, you've probably heard about energy units per tick, energy units per packet, and possibly the different types of voltages as well. If you're learning this for the first time, it can be quite overwhelming, so I hope this video can help you out. Now the main thing you need to know about industrial craft energy is the difference between energy units per tick and energy units per packet. You've probably seen them written as EU slash T and EUP, respectively. Now they're not the same, they're actually two different types of measurement. Energy units per tick measures the energy produced or consumed over time. So, for example, we know this geothermal generator is producing energy at a rate of 20 energy units per tick, and that also means that that bat box here beside it is receiving energy at a rate of 20 units per tick as well. Now, a common question is, why is it per tick? I mean, what's a tick and why isn't it per second or per minute? Well, that's really a programming question which ties into Minecraft's game code. Now, I'll probably go into that in more detail with another video perhaps, but for now, all you need to know is that under normal circumstances, there are 20 ticks per real life second. So going back to the geothermal generator, if it's producing 20 energy units per tick and there are 20 ticks per second, you can work out that 400 industrial craft energy units will be produced every second. And looking at the bat box that's receiving the energy, 400 EU seems about right. Now onto EU packets. An EU packet is like an invisible energy container and its size is simply measured in EU. They can range in size anywhere from one energy unit all the way up to about a million energy units. The industrial craft electrical cables are limited by the size of the packets they can receive. So for example, tin cables or ultra low current cables are only capable of receiving packets between one and five end units. This means that they can only be used with machines that output EU packets within that range, such as the windmill and the solar panel. If you connected a tin cable to the geothermal generator, it will be destroyed almost instantly. As we know from before, the geothermal generator outputs at a rate of 20 energy units per tick. This means that its packet size is 20 EU, and the tin cable can only support a maximum of 5 EU, which is why it's destroyed. Now with that being said, even though cables have a maximum packet size, they can actually transport an unlimited quantity of packets without being destroyed, as long as all the packets they're transporting are within their supported packet size. So for example, the copper cable can support a maximum packet size of 32 energy units. If two geothermal generators are connected together, they'll be outputting at a combined rate of 40 energy units per tick. Now at first it might seem like that's too much for the copper cable to handle, but it's not. This is because even though a combined total of 40 energy units per tick is passing through it, the 40 EU is actually made up of two separate 20 EU packets. So even if you had 15 geothermal generators, which would be generating a combined total of 300 energy units per tick, the copper cable can still handle it just fine, because even though a maximum of 300 EU per tick is passing through it, it's actually broken down into 15 separate 20 EU packets, which are all under the copper cable's 32 EU packet size limit. It's recommended that before setting up any industrial craft machines, find out the energy input and output packet sizes and find out which cable would work best.